Hey everyone, I apologize if this goes off prematurely, it's been doing it at times, I don't know why. But, I want to welcome you to my mid-October, mid uh, early November monthly opinions, or basically my mid-October monthly opinions on the Sonic HR comic book and franchise. And, as you all probably saw with the previous video, I did recently get... Sonic issue 277, and I do have to correct myself about something I said in that review. I said that Mega Beat Man was either going to put his uh, review up either tomorrow or today. Well, he did put it up today. I just saw it, and it's a good review. You should check it out. Now, as far as the future of this comic book goes right now, so what's to come in the next couple months, if not the next year? We do know that uh, Hidden Cost, which is the backup story, which is going to be the backup story in uh, the upcoming issues, well, this issue and the next two issues, uh, is, going to, is being done by Aaliyah Baker. And a lot of people have actually become fans of Aaliyah, who is Ian Flynn's wife, uh, from what I understand, or his girlfriend or something. Uh, but everybody's become a fan of Aaliyah's. And apparently she is becoming a fan favorite because of the fact that when she writes a story, she doesn't write it as if, oh, it's just action and adventure and all that. She writes it from a character perspective. She writes it as if, you know, trying to put herself in the character's shoes. Hold on for a sec. Like I said, she writes it as if she's trying to put herself in the character's shoes. And that's really good. It really is. And when I look at what she's doing with Cassie and Clove, apparently these are going to be her personal pet projects if you will, and if Aaliyah Baker is good at doing character development, then I expect that she's going to go in a direction with these characters that we may or may not like. One perspective I'm thinking if she's going to do is she's going to make them double agents. What that means is possibly after Hidden Cost, which we're not entirely sure of yet, she's probably going to have them see the light, you know, kind of switch sides, but switch them in a way that it doesn't look like the leaving Eggman side. In other words, you know, they'll become allies with the Freedom Fighters, but they'll become inside double agents. In other words, they'll make it look like they're still fighting for Eggman, they're still fighting against the Freedom Fighters, but in reality they're actually helping them. I think that's where Ilya may end up going. If not, I'd be really surprised. I mean, we, we know in one of the synopses for the final part of Hidden Cost that there's a price that's going to be paid. If what we're thinking that price is, then character development-wise, you'll want Clove to want to gain a little bit of anger, a little bit of hatred towards the Freedom Fighters for what's happened, but then maybe through that character development, help her see the light and, you know, be like, okay, you know, maybe Eggman is not exactly the direction I should go in. Basically kind of make it to where she's kind of confused at first, like she doesn't know what to do. You know, she doesn't know what to do, so I would expect Aaliyah to come up with something in the future for uh, for the Cassie, uh, for the Clove and Cassie character. I expect her to come up with that in the near future. Um, basically, come up with something for both those sister characters, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, as far as Loop goes, and I've mentioned this in two previous videos, as well as I mentioned it uh, in my review, I know a lot of people may not be a fan of her being younger, but I think, as I mentioned there, as I mentioned in those videos that I'll mention here, I think the reason she is younger is the fact that it allows her to grow up with the characters. 
It allows it to relate more. And, you know, again, it looks like what Ian's doing is taking a page maybe out of what they've done, what Nickelodeon's done with TMNT and what they've done with April there. As well as probably take a page out of other franchises that have done similar things. But, to me, but to me, I think that's exactly what's going on here. Um, I, I see, I see that's, the, I see in a way that that's probably the direction he wants to do. I mean, when you take a look at, at Lupe here, you know, if you kind of step back and maybe see it from Ian's perspective, it may have seemed a little out of place for her to be basically the oldest, basically be the senior, be the one with more wisdom and be a parent and all that, and yet she's fighting with the Freedom Fighters, and maybe in the eyes of some, like let's say Ian Flynn, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know? You know, that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense sense that, you know, she would be being basically the age of, let's say, Sonic's parents or maybe a little younger or something like that, you know, that she would, you know, be fighting alongside these teenagers. So possibly, uh, from Ian's perspective, it makes sense to de-age her in the reboot, in the soft reboot retcon, and make her a teenager herself so that it's more relatable. And I think he takes that concept, and again, I mentioned this in the other videos, he, I think he's taking that concept from the Sadie Am episode, Cry of the Wolf. Because when she talked about what happened, happened and everything, you know, how she talked about her, how her father was captured and everything, usually, back with a show like that, when you talk about your parents being captured, you're supposedly a teenager talking about that. You're not an adult, you're not a parent yourself or anything, you're a teenager in some sense. <clears throat> so that's what I'm thinking Ian also got the concept from was Cry the Wolf, well pretty much I think it was indicated that Loop was a teenager but more like in her 18s, maybe teen, maybe around the age of 19, 18, 19, 20 basically her late teens, early twenties. That, that's what I would assume. That's what I assume. And you might say, well, why is she the same age as, as Sally and Sonic here? Well, again, it's about keeping her about the same age as they are. So keeping her the same age as they are, you also keep her the same size as they are. Uh, and Sally M, you know, they probably made her statuesque and tall because of course she's a wolf. But also the fact that she's, um, you know, she's, you know, she's in her late teens, early twenties, so it makes more sense, not just from a statuous standard of her being a wolf and everything, but also the fact that she is maybe about a few years older than Sonic and Sally, so it makes more sense. Here, though, with him doing, with her being the age, being the same size and everything, Again, I think what Ian's doing is he's taking a page out of what we've seen with shows like Nickelodeon's TMNT and what they did with April, and he's basically allowing her, Lupe, to be the same age so that she can grow up with Sonic and Sally and go from there. So, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. And it kind of looked like, in my opinion, it kind of looked like, in my opinion, that they tried to... Have her, like I said in my review, it's kind of like they tried to make her act a little flirtatious when she told Sonic, hey, you never asked about me being a Gaia Key, uh, you know, a Gaia Key Guardian or anything like that. And she kind of acted, it seemed to me in that one panel, she kind of acted a little flirtatious. So maybe that was another reason. Again, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, overall, though, um, I, I really don't have a problem with it. I mean, she does... You can definitely tell it's still, it's still the same loop, the design's very similar, except it's more segified, more, you know, segified, sonic style, whatever you want to call it. So, it's a, it's a little bit more different, 
but it's, it's different, but it's got a similar, more recognizable, familiar design. The one thing I will give credit to uh, Ian and Aaliyah for is at least they're trying to, you know, make, you know, give the characters more development. You can tell, in a sense, Aaliyah's becoming a little bit more of an influence on Ian, kind of making him realize, hey, you've got to give these characters development, you've got to give them some moments, you've got to make it funny for them at times, so it's not always serious action adventure and all that. And you can see that with this issue, you can see it with 277. And hopefully that's going to continue in the next few year, few issues to come. In the next few issues to come. Um, now speaking of future issues, we already have gotten uh, the synopsis for some of the first issues of 2016 in January. Well now we just got the newest synopsis for the issues coming out the following months in February of 2016. And I'll tell you, so many synopsis fans have been waiting to hear about for a while because with the Sonic the Hitchcock synopsis for I think 281 we finally see the return of Dulcy. but here's what's crazy about this Dulcy has an Dulcy like Lupe has a familiar look her look is very familiar but she's not big anymore she's not a huge dragon anymore she might be but not entirely Dulcy basically looks more humanoid in a sense basically she doesn't have the stubby legs anymore the you know like you know she's not like she was when she first appeared in the comics you know she's not like she was in the cartoon she's more like she could stand on her own two feet like this shake hands and all that she's basically about the same size as Sonic maybe a little bit more statuesque because she's a dragon you know by the way she has a freaking new outfit on it looks like some kind of armor and they're gonna meet her or uh, reunite with her in the the planet's equivalent nation of China. In the planet Mobius, I'm just going to call it Mobius, plain and simple, equivalent of China. And it sounds like Dulcy as well is going to be a Gaia Key guardian as well. So that's kind of surprising. But I guess if you're going to bring them back in somehow and you're going to incorporate characters like Loop and Dulcy, you got to have a reason for them coming back. And them being Gaia Key Guardians might just be <coughs> might just be the example. <coughs> like I said, you know, them being Gaia Key Guardians, you know, might just be the example that, that you need. So, really looking forward to that and seeing how they really incorporate Dulcy here. Um, and that does raise the question of exactly who else is going to be brought back and become a Gaia Key Guardian. That's a good question. It's like, who else are they going to bring in? Again, that is a good question. Um, overall, I. Again, you could tell Aaliyah is having more influence on Ian, and you could also tell in a sense that Aaliyah might take over the comic down the line if Ian's got other projects he's got to do. You could definitely see, in a sense, uh, through the stories that she's doing, the backup stories and all that, that you can almost tell that perhaps she and maybe somebody else is being set up. Um, I can't think who else it would be, but it looks like Aaliyah is one of the top candidates to maybe take over while Ian focuses on other projects that he has. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, if that's, if that's what's going on, if she's being prepped for that position. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, now as far as the rest of the comic goes, um, you know, to me, you know, 280 starts in January, apparently, because we're at 277, 278 is in October, you know, 279 is in December, 280. So basically, you're looking at 291 or 212 or 291 ending 2016. 2000, yeah, let's see, um, 80, 281, 280, I mean, 280, 281, 282, 283, 284. Let's see. 
90, 91. Yep. You're looking around 291 ending to 2016. But the question's going to be, as we get through these 12 months starting in January, going from 280 to 291, exactly what does he have planned? Because when you think about it, when you think about it, we will have legitimately nine months after that. Legitimately. 2017 is when we're going to hit 300 issues. So the plan, obviously, from here to there is how do we get to it, and will we get to it? You see, that is a question. You know, I talked about in a two-part video the road to 300 and how they get there. You can check that out here on my channel. But the question is, how do they get to it is the question. How do they make it to that milestone in 2017. Cause think about it this way. 292 is in January 2017. 293 is in February of that year. 293 is in March of 2017. 295 is in April. 296 is in May. 297 is in June. 298 is in July. 299. You're looking at September 2017. And the question is, how do we get from there to September 2017. And like I said, I talked about that in my Archie's World to 300 video, which again, you can check out here on this channel. But the only question is how, when, and where. And that's totally up to Ian and Aaliyah, but you know what? As we get close to 300, I think Aaliyah Baker is going to take more of a, take more responsibility on. She's going to be more of a writer, she's going to write more of the, not just the backup stories, but I think she's going to write more of the main stories. She's also going to contribute with the universe stories or as well, but I think the closer we get to 300, the more she's going to become evolved, oh, involved, I should say, the more she's going to become involved and the more she's going to probably take on the main, writing the main stories and stuff like that. Because I got a feeling Ian's going to have some other projects he's going to be working on as well. So he's going to need someone he could depend on to take a break from that. And like I said, you could tell she's becoming an influence in a sense. Because for many fans, and this was more of a character developing issue in both stories in a sense. And with one story being by Ian and the other being by Aaliyah. I mean, heck, Mega Beatman said right now he prefers Aaliyah's story writing over Ian's. Because Ian obviously doesn't know how to do character development, and Aaliyah does. So, we'll just have to see what happens there. But I do believe Aaliyah's got a lot planned for the Clove sisters, or for the sisters Clove and Cassia, uh, in the near future. So, look out for that. She's either going to make them double agents, or she's going to have Clove get to a point that where something happens to her sister that... You know, Eggman's not going to want to help her because they failed, and she's going to have this hatred towards both sides. Like, she's going to be confused. There's going to be some character development in the future, either way she goes with those two characters. But the question is, what happens next? Where do we go from here? Well, again, we got Dulcie coming up next year in February, so that's a good sign. We got the Eggman arc where he faces against the Nagus twins. Apparently, he's going to gather all his egg bosses together, get some kind of group together. But there's something going on. You see, apparently, the only way these egg bosses, whether they like Eggman or they don't, uh, you know, are going to get together, and these other you know, people aligned with Eggman, or have, have it out for Eggman because they want his power and all that, the only way they're going to do this is apparently he has some kind of secret he's going to hold over them, some kind of secrets that he knows and nobody else, he knows and they know, but nobody else does. And that he'll let out unless they help him. Now, apparently, Dulcie's not the only character coming back. There's several other characters as well. Conquering Storm, she's coming back. She's got to look very similar to her old one, but her eyes are a little bit more different. So she's coming back. And, uh, you know, with Conquering Storm coming back, you might see a connection there between her and Nicole. Who knows? Um, 